G'day everyone. So today I'm going to attempt to repair this Belkin wireless router. It's a model uh, model uh, F5D8236-4 version 2. It's an N wireless router and uh, uh, one input, four outputs on the LAN. Um, and it's got a really weird fault in that it, when you when you make a change in the settings, it will uh, go to reboot and uh, never start up again. You can unplug it and uh, plug it back in, um, and it still won't won't come on. It'll just you know randomly come on when it feels like it, but um, not when it's supposed to. Um, it, apparently, it works fine if you if you leave it as is, but as soon as you make a setting change, it uh, shuts off. For an undetermined length of time. So we'll uh, crack it open and see if we can see what's going on. First thing I'm going to do is check the power supply and uh, I've got a, a basic load, a resistive load across it. It's 12 volt output rated to 1 amp so this is a 12 ohm resistor it's going to give us 1 amp. Unregulated, uh, well with no load on it there's um, 15 0.2 roughly, which seems a bit high for a 12 volt low, uh, supply. So I'll switch on the load, and we'll see that drop there. There's a little bit of ripple on there too. Um, that's dropped to uh, um, it's, it's anywhere from 11.6 to 12.8. So let's uh, have a closer look at that ripple. So there we've got. Um, now ripple is uh, 500 millivolts per division. Um, it's giving us 1.1 volt peak to peak. That kind of seems excessive. Uh, I'm thinking it could very well be upsetting this device. Um, what I'll do when testing it is um, I'll run off the bench supply and see if we can uh, rule this out as being the cause. So next step will be to plug it in and um, connect to a PC and see what happens. I've just plugged the router into the bench supply and it's only pulling 40 milliamps, which is really not a lot. For something that should be running, uh, I would expect a bit more than that. So something isn't operating correctly internally. Uh, if I just push the button on top there and it goes to 60 milliamps. I'm thinking it could be an internal uh, voltage supply issue. No point trying to connect it to a PC when it's not going to turn on. Let's crack the lid off it. It looks like this uh, side panel just unclips. So we'll get my pry tool and try that. Now you can see it wrap, it's wrapping around here, uh, so the easier clip is probably going to be along this edge. There's actually a little bit of an indentation there, so here it goes. Makes life a lot easier. Down the side. Oops. Down the other side, top side. thought, given the shape of it, because it curves around there, that it might just lift at the back and push off, but it's uh, not going to do that, it's getting a bit stuck, where else are getting stuck? Well it looks like I was right about it being held in these corners, I lifted the back and looked in with a, with a light, and there's screw posts, one there and one there, underneath this front face. So this face is obviously stuck on after the fact. We'll need to get that off. Hopefully it's not too sticky, whatever they've used. I thought this might have been one solid plastic uh, piece, but it's only a sticker. So it peels back easy enough, and there we can see the screw in each corner.
cunning manufacturers. Anything to make it obvious that someone's been in their product, I guess. <laughs> Now if I just lift it on either side and at the back, it's going to pop off and reveal. Da -da -da. Ta -da. And there we have it. Very basic router, much like all the others. Okay, what we can see here, this is where our power comes in, the socket here, uh, through a couple of uh, uh, ferrite chokes, there's a transistor there, a couple of capacitors, there's an inductor there, and another inductor there, and each one of those has a diode, so bet your bottom dollar that they're switching, uh, switching regulators, and they'll be generating a couple of different voltage rails for us. Um, Possibly 3.3, maybe a 1.7 or something, 1.8, but we'll uh, probe those and see if there is anything going on there. And because I'm running it off the bench supply, it's quite handy, I can just chuck the negative of the multimeter into the supply itself, keep it out of the way, and then just probe around with the positive. Right, switcher on. Still only a few milliamps, so we'll have a look at uh, that there. Millivolts, there's nothing coming off, that's... Oh, no, make a better connection. One and a half volts. And this one here, 3.3. .3. Okay, they're all right. Let's just have a nosy at this one and see what it's doing. Two volts. Three point three and two. All right. Well, the rails seem to be okay. Still no lights. Let's see if uh, that looks like our oscillator for the main CPU. So we'll uh, see if that's oscillating and make sure it has a, a chance at starting up. Right, we have a probe of the oscillator. And 40 megahertz. Which is what appears to be stamped on the lid, so that's a good sign. So I'm wondering if this thing is uh, trying to read its EEPROM uh, or, or, or flash memory while it's um, starting up. So we have a uh, SDRAM chip on there and I'm going to scope the data lines uh, as I turn it on and we'll see if uh, anything is uh, attempting to be read from there that might show whether the CPU is working as it should. So pin 2 on this IC is the first of 16 uh, data lines so get on there and plug it in. Uh, look at that. Let's try that again. There's definitely some activity happening on there, so it is trying to turn on and boot up. Okay, it's been a couple of hours, and uh, what I was doing is trying to find out what uh, state of operation this thing was in. What I did do was uh, originally I put here we oh here we have the serial interface, um, and I I believe it's a standard serial interface. Um, we've got um, 
two, four, six, eight, ten. You can see these these um, pin headers that aren't populated. Um, the uh, if if you have a look on on Google, you should find a standard pin out for them. But in this the way this is, we've got um, we've got receive and transmit. Uh, the second and third ones up on the right there. Uh, ground and plus three or 3.3 um, what I did was uh, I have the the oscilloscope wasn't picking it up so what I have is a um, cheap and nasty logic analyzer which um, captured the the waveforms coming off the transmit and um, it decoded the serial and I was able to see uh, it getting stuck at a certain point there is a wiki page that has a known good uh, boot log and I was reading through that and uh, that's how I know where it, where it got up to as well it, um, it was laid out a bit better because I was only looking at a string of data in a, in a, in a continuous line but anyway uh, long story short I thought okay I want to um, well, in, in, in amongst that, near the beginning of turning it on, it says press spacebar three times to enter command mode. And then it goes ahead and it unzips the firmware, uh, which is on a chip on the underside of this board. Um, we've got here, this is the, the uh, SD RAM. Um, and then on the underside is the, the chip with the firmware in it. So it unzips that and then it gets stuck. I'm thinking could be buggy firmware. Um, and what I wanted to do is hook it up to serial to uh, my laptop and try the spacebar options and see what happened. Now the thing is this is 3 volt serial and my laptop is not. But what I had sitting in, the, in, in my drawer for some time is this little interface cable. It has 9 pin serial on one end and it was actually from, uh, well for connecting to the old Sharp GX10i model cell phone which I uh, used to hack about a lot back in the day. Um, the chip on this is a uh, Max, or Maximum, Max 3316E, which converts uh, converts your standard RS-232 level to uh, 3 volt, so everything's happy. Um, that took a bit of playing around with to get right, because the wire, um, the, the transmit wire, is, is not exactly as you'd expect when you're tracing it through. However, we got there in the end, and here's where I'm at. Now hopefully you can read that, but uh, as you can see at the top, it says uh, press spacebar three times to enter command mode, and uh, which I did. It gave me the boot prompt uh, where I typed question mark, because I had no idea what I was doing, and uh, question mark does every now and then give you some uh, re relevant information and now I have a menu I have upload to flash arrays flash run runtime code set the MAC address a serial number board version other options it's got set options uh, print boot params parameters set SKU number set pin number load ATE from TFTP and I think that last one is going to be my golden ticket to um, load, reload the firmware or even a aftermarket firmware, but I'll try and put the original firmware back on and hopefully it will boot. So I'll do a little bit of research and see if I can dig up the firmware file and uh, go from there. Right, well after a bit more playing around, um, I was able to observe this. It seems to happen randomly. Um, Mm, but what's happening is it's it's attempting to boot and, and the error there is MDIO write operation timeout. And I did a bit of research and the MDIO is, is to do with the accessing of the physical um, LAN connection and I guess that's basically it. Um, she's dead Jim. There's no separate IC for managing the network uh, ports the, the Ethernet ports. It's all done on the on the it's a um, <clears throat> Raylink 
chip and that appears to go directly to the ethernet ports and it must manage that so so there's an internal error in the chip itself um, once it's errored a few times as you can see it's gone through and booted up you can access the web interface you can access it uh, wirelessly um, but failing that there's there's no physical connection available so yeah that's as far as I can go with this one um, maybe I'm overlooking something but uh, given that I can't I mean all, all the settings are able to be changed um, and if I plug in a network cable now I've got I've got no link light I've got nothing um, yeah game over which is unfortunate but uh, hopefully you learned a bit as uh, as well as I did I'll just um, quickly show you one other thing I noticed when you boot it and go into the um, boot menu one of the options there is uh, is where is it G for run runtime code now quite often when uh, you plug it in it wouldn't actually give that MDO MDIO timeout um, I found if you let it sit for a couple of minutes and then hit uh, or go 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 into the menu here and let it sit for a couple of minutes and then hit uh, run runtime code that gets it to boot um, I think the the minute or two timeout allowed it to sit and settle and and something to come to a, a, a halt internally to allow it to do its thing uh, whereas unplugging it and plugging it in right away um, was a bit too soon for whatever the error was so yeah I just kind of stumbled upon that um, just going through the menu options and I hit run runtime code and it did that so yeah still it's no good to anyone even the WAN input doesn't work so yeah oh hopefully maybe that helped you with accessing serial connections anyway if you've ever ever encounter a, um, a device that you need to access um, you could yeah this as I said I used an old sharp GX10i uh, cell phone uh, serial cable that came with the converter IC already in it and uh, one of the pins actually the one I thought that would go to the uh, the transmit so the receive pin in the cable uh, actually wasn't the one I thought it was but uh, that's I figured that one out that, that was not too too hard it doesn't use any of the um, hardware flow control it's just a, um, a three wire ground TX and RX connection um, very handy to be able to do uh, especially if you want to load your own firmware um, if you've got a functioning router and you might want to load um, something like DDWRT is a popular aftermarket firmware for routers um, I think often you need to go into this um, serial console to get it to boot um, in a way that um, you can upload the new firmware but yeah thanks for watching maybe we'll have more luck with the next job